I now invite Dr. Rajiv TP from India to speak on the mentorship and career guidance, the guiding path for the professional excellence of urology trainees. Over to you, sir. Respected chairpersons, my seniors and dear friends, sorry for the delay, I was in the council meeting. So thank you, South, for assigning this topic to me, that is mentorship and career guidance a guiding path to professional excellence. So my talk will be circling around the history, who is a mentor, role of a mentor, what Mendy needs to do, what is formal, informal mentorship, benefits and conclusion. It, the history is the term mentor comes from the Greek epic poem, the Odyssey, in which the Odysseus enters the care of his son, Telemachus to his friend, Mentor, when he leaves for the Trojan War. Mentor is really the personification of wisdom and the ultimate teacher who faithfully guided Telemachus through various stages of life. The role of a mentor has evolved over the time to meet the needs of the mentee. And in, especially in a rapidly advancing field like urology, in which many opportunities are there to receive and provide mentorship at every level of training. In India, the concept dates back to the era of ashrams, where the guru remained the lifelong teacher for a particular student. This was the first example of mentoring students under supervision. How one utilizes mentorship and career guidance effectively, because one has to identify the goal, clearly define what are the career objectives and what needs to be achieved through mentorship, and seek an appropriate mentor. A mentor should be an experienced professional in the field, build relationship that there should be a genuine connect which is crucial for effective mentoring relationship and should be proactive that is receptive to constructive criticism for improvement of the skills. Now a mentor can be coach, advisor, a motivator, a supporter, a guide in all aspects. So a mentor will play not only one role but all, the, all of these in some point of time during the mentoring. So mentorship is defined as a dynamic, reciprocal relationship in a work environment between an advanced career in government who is a mentor and a beginner is a protege aimed at the development of both. And it is again a relationship between two people where the mentor will provide advice and guidance to the mentee to help him grow, learn and develop professionally. Why mentorship is important? Between, because it gives an opportunity to develop and become a mentee more competent, prepare for the growth opportunities in future. It can promote skill development, can break down barriers in communication, help building social ties, and mentorship holds mentors and mentees accountable to commitments that they make to one another. How one can spot a great member? A mentor should be a senior person who has got all leadership skills, who is seasoned in the field with a lot of knowledge which can be shared, had a good reputation and a good integrity. A good mentor should have <coughs> good communication skills. He should be capable to listen and support others regardless of the experience and seniority. Should understand the different perspectives and culture within the workplace and should we have the ability to help the mentees develop newer skills <coughs> or refine the existing one? And should be an experienced personality and should have a positive outlook and have the love for the profession. So he should be patient, empathetic, knowledgeable, open-minded, and should have the highest level of integrity, honest and fair in the dealings. MNDs are typically individuals who seek guidance, advice, and support to achieve the goal. They may be recent graduates or young professionals who want to move up in the ranks. And the aim is to gain knowledge from an experienced personnel through conversations, feedback sessions, and instructions. So MNDs should all also have good qualities to be successful. They should be having an openness they should be able to respect both themselves and the mentor's expertise, flexibility in their approach, self-awareness, and confidence. 
Now, a mentor should be capable to impart surgical skills, should be able, capable of building a good network for the mentee, encourage the mentee for research and publications, enhance soft skills, better patient interactions, and invoke trust. And he should be a personnel who can provide a letter of recommendation where need be for job replacements and other things. Be available on a regular basis and should be a person who should be approachable and non-judgmental. He should be able to show appreciation to the mentee at times and he should value the opinions what the mentee can put forward and the benefits of being a mentee is he can learn the workplace culture, enhance finer skill developments, can could be able to have good networking opportunities, could be will develop problem solving nature, and there is a knowledgeable transfer too. There are different types of mentor mentee relationships. Some of them are the classic relationships, speed mentorships, functional mentorships, peer mentorship, and group mentorships. So what a mentee needs to do is should take the initiative, accept the critic, work hard, support the peers, and maintain a work-life balance. Now, does formal mentorship work? The key com uh, components to a successful formal mentorship are mentor preparation, planning committees, contracts, mentorship activities, and a formal curricula for mentees. Advantages of formal mentoring are it is a structured framework, there will be clearly art articulated expectations, and there will be more accountability. Current state of formal mentoring is that even in formal mentorship models, there is a great variability in curriculum rigor and structure across residency programs, and the optimal curriculum structure and time frame for meetings are not well elucidated. Why it is so? Because people think that informal mentorship is sufficient. There is not enough time for a formal mentorship, not enough funding, not enough faculty with interest, and not e enough resident with interest as well. So informal mentorship is an unstructured session. There is no accountability. And there is a question of burnout. It has been found that there is a burnout to the tune of 40% among the urologists. This is among a survey of the urology trainees. So benefits of mentorship can reduce this burnout. So successful membership, there are various programs like this. And the benefits are basically one can develop the surgical competency, increase the economic productivity, can have a career boosting, and also can have a work-life balance. So reasons for failure are many. Basically, there is a misaligned program, lack of institutional support, or inadequate mentor, mentor, mentee time availability. So <clears throat> there are various levels for effective evaluation of mentorship and mentee relationship. So to conclude, as a urology trainee, mentoring and career guidance play a crucial role for the professional development. Guidance from experienced urologists offer valuable insights and advice for navigating the career path. Continuous learning and dedication essential for career growth as a urologist. And mentorship is a two-way street where mentor offers guidance and mentee has to be proactive and dedicated in making most of their advice. Mentoring should reach each and every budding urologist as patients and society at large are also stakeholders and beneficiaries in this relation. Seldom can one person play all the roles of a mentor. Thus, collective mentoring is the best option. In future, effective mentorship programs will help reduce top talents and generate novel innovations that lead to tremendous success. Thank you for your patient hearing.